All right, welcome to today's lecture. Uh, today we are going to look at uh, parts of mobile devices and uh, laptop computer hardware. That's what we are going to look into today. Um, over the uh, previous chapters, chapters one to six, we've uh, mostly focused our attention on the desktop computers. Now, we want to look at a uh, laptop and mobile devices. We want to look at uh, the hardware configuration of laptop and then uh, mobile devices. We want to look at uh, the characteristics of the laptop and other mobile devices. We want to look at the uh, configuration of the laptop, the hardware and component installation and configuration. Then other mobile devices, a uh, hardware overview also. Those are the areas that we are looking into uh, in the course of our lecture today. First, I want to want to know that uh, when we talk about mobile devices, there are certain things that are their characteristics that make us to uh, refer to them as uh, mobile devices. Uh, one important aspect is uh, mobility. That is, we are the mobile devices are portable and take them away from our home, from our office, along the way and use them. So that is one important aspect of uh, mobile devices, laptops and mobile devices. So you are able to access information, to access information electronically from different locations outside of your home and office. Then the uh, connectivity is uh, limited by the available network that you have. If you want to connect to the internet, so it is the network that you have, the cellular network or data network that you have that makes that possible. Now, mobile devices, one other characteristic or property is that uh, they have their own inbuilt power. They carry rechargeable batteries that uh, you can use it without a uh, mains power supply. After you have charged it with mains power supply, you can carry the portable device with you. And then the inbuilt power, which is a rechargeable battery, continues to power it until it uh, uh, exhausts the energy stored in it. Then, apart from that, mobile devices compared to other devices such as the desktop, they are very small and lightweight. So the portable, you can carry it all around with you. And they don't rely on a, a other connected peripheral before they can operate. They don't rely on a, the other connected peripheral before they can operate. For instance, uh, if you talk about uh, the desktop and uh, for networking, you'll be looking at uh, having a server, local area network to connect all the devices together and so on and so forth before you can use the desktop to connect. Now, mobile devices do not require this. They can operate on their own. They, they are stand alone. Like in the picture you are seeing now, everybody has a mobile device, laptop, tab, you no know, tablets, mobile phone, they are in a meeting and everybody is utilizing his own uh, mobile device. Probably they are into uh, a video conferencing together and the material is being shared or, poss or possibly uh, a demonstration on the screen that everybody logged on and then they are able to access. So that is a characteristic of mobile devices. You are able to carry it, they are small and lightweight. They have, because they, are, they have their own battery, you can utilize it uh, when there is no mains power supply. Laptops and then other portable computers, they run a, uh, usually run full versions of the operating system. And the, the type of operating system that we have, we have Microsoft Windows, we have iOS, we have Linux for the laptops. Apart from that, they can also have the same uh, power in terms of uh, the computing power and memory resources as desktop computers. Sometimes laptops even have higher than uh, some desktop computers. Now, laptops, they have inbuilt system that encompasses both a screen, keyboard, mouse, which is a pointing device, and also touchpad, for instance, everything in one unit. So it makes it to be easier to use. Uh, look at it, the desktop. You can see that the desktop has all these parts separately. The system unit separate, the monitor separate, keyboard separate, mouse separate, and so on and so forth. Everything has been integrated into one unit in laptops. And then the battery powers every, uh, you know, every function that require electrical power. 
the battery powers that. Then they also have a connectivity functions because they have embedded in them uh, wired or wireless uh, Ethernet networking and Bluetooth, so they can connect. You can connect them to uh, external network. Uh, apart from that, they also laptops also have a connection such as USB, HDMI, but sometimes they may not have the same uh, expansion capacity like a desktop. Sometimes, so in order to make uh, your laptops more uh, portable, what do we do? Uh, we may need a additional peripheral uh, connection that will require hardware like a dock or port a replicator to make it a more portable, to make a laptop more portable. Now, smartphone characteristics. Let's look at the smartphone characteristics. Smartphones uh, run their own special operating system that are designed for mobile devices, all right? For instance, uh, we have uh, two different uh, popular uh, operating system for smartphones. We have the Google uh, uh, Android. We have the the Apple uh, iOS also. We also have a uh, Windows. There's also another uh, some set of devices that operate a uh, Windows uh, uh, operating system, smartphone that operates a uh, Windows operating system. Now the software for smartphones they are limited to. Uh, what you can obtain from their app store. For instance, Google App Store, which is a Google Play Store, and then the iOS App Store, Apple App, uh, app Store. What you can install on mobile devices or mobile uh, smartphones, they are just what you can obtain from this uh, app store. So that is where you can get their software. All right. And then also the operating system of mobile uh, smartphones, they are now, they are, they are limited because uh, you cannot, um, actually upgrade the, the way you can with a, a, a desktop system or a laptop. So they have limited OS or pre, or pre get ability and can require the purpose, uh, the purchase of new model. You have to buy another one to take advantage of latest OS. For instance, if you use a phone that was purchased, let's say five or six years ago, that one may come with an Android, probably Android 6 or Android 7. And you discover that when Android has gone up, you know, to Android 8, 9, 10, 11, some of those old uh, smartphones cannot install or you cannot upgrade the older operating system to the uh, latest version. That is a, a characteristic of smartphone. Then we also want to know that smartphones also use cellular co connectivity, you know, to connect voice, text, and data services. Other ways by which you can connect uh, mobile devices include the uh, Bluetooth and the uh, Wi-Fi, using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So we can also use that to connect uh, mobile devices, uh, more uh, smartphone. You can see people using smartphone here. There's a lady here carrying smartphone. Now, the beauty of this is that uh, some of the things you can actually, uh, the very good percentage of what you can achieve on your desktop or your, or your laptop can actually be achieved on smartphone also. And some to limited uh, uh, you know, extents, to a very limited extent. Now, some of the education programs that you use on your laptop or desktop have been developed for their own uh, operating system also. All right. Uh, other features of smartphone include the uh, GPS, GPS functionality. That is a global positioning system. Uh, GPS receiver in the phone uses satellite to determine the geographic location of a particular device. So where you are can be identified using uh, longitude and latitude that has been embedded into the GPS system via satellites. And then some apps also allow smartphones to act as navigational GPS that provides guiding for driving, biking, or walking. Some of you must have used some of these uh, apps like Google Map and so on, that if you are going anywhere in the world, just turn on the app on your smartphone and it can actually lead you the way you are going to drive you know, to reach the particular destination you are going. Now, devices that don't have GPS service can also determine their location, although in less precise way, uh, less precise way, by using information coming from a nearby mobile service antennas, that is cellular antennas, or nearby Wi-Fi access points to determine their location. So rather than using GPS, you can use a uh, service antennas of a, a, the network provider to locate the location. 
Another feature of, our, feature of uh, some smartphone is the ability to tether, that is to share the cellular, cellular data connection to other uh, mobile devices, like a, uh, what we call hotspots. When you turn on your hotspot on your, your mobile phone, another device that you allow can actually connect, such as laptop or mobile phone. You can actually connect to you know, your data network. That is tethering. That's another feature of the smartphone. Okay, now let's look at tablets and e-readers. Tablets are also similar to smartphones because they also use special mobile operating system like the Android or iOS. They also have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. And then most of them have USB and audio ports also. Most of the apps that work on phones are also available for tablets and then uh, tabs. But unlike smartphones, tablets normally have larger touch screens and displays. So they have bigger screens. And for that reason, you may not easily put them in your pocket like you do uh, with uh, your smartphone, even though they have the same functionality. And some, sometimes this uh, bigger screen is also help you because it's almost like the screen of the laptop that you're able to achieve so many things. Now, apart from that, uh, tablets normally have touch screens larger touch screens and then some smartphones don't even have touch screen but these days almost all, all smartphones uh, use a uh, touch screens so likewise the the tablets and e-readers they also have a uh, touch screen that you can touch to type to navigate and, and things like that it's not all tablets that have the ability to access cellular networks using sim most of them do not have the uh, ability and they usually do not include uh, GPS uh, receivers. Uh, but some do have ability to use a SIM and connect to the cellular network and be able to do a uh, GPS uh, receiver, but not all, most of them don't have this uh, function. Uh, E-readers such as Amazon Kindle, uh, special purpose devices with black and white displays that, have, uh, that have been optimized for reading text. So those ones are specially made for uh, reading text, although they resemble tablets, but they lack uh, most of the features and functions that the tablets can provide. So they are not uh, entirely like tablets. Many of them uh, have a uh, touch displays that can make it easy for you to turn, to scroll, to navigate uh, uh, the settings and access eBooks online. And then for connectivity, uh, some of them have a uh, free cellular data connection for downloading books and uh, specific, at a specific store. But well, mostly they use Wi-Fi. They rely on Wi-Fi to connect. Now, e-reader batteries also, they are usually usually longer than that of a tablet. They can last longer than that of tablets. And that's another feature of e-readers. You know, even though they are like tablets, but they are optimized for, you know, for their battery so that they, the power can run, the, uh, the battery power can run longer than that of a tablets. Now we also have what we call wearables which include uh, smartwatches and fitness trackers. These are devices that are produced, you know, specifically produced to monitor uh, some functions on the body. For instance, your health can be monitored. Some are used to, uh, to determine uh, uh, distances covered. For instance, you want, you want to go out to go and have exercise to jog around your neighborhood. You want to time yourself. Some wearables can do that. You, you set it. And then you wear it like a wristwatch, you jog around, they need to tell you how many kilometers you have covered. And we also have a, uh, some of them that are uh, attached to the clothes instead of uh, wearing it on your body. Some of them are smart watches that you wear it and then it includes microprocessor whereby it's using operating system and apps, just like a, uh, a smartphone. Some of them also have sensors uh, that can gather data about various aspects of the body. And they use Bluetooth to report the information back uh, to another device. For instance, uh, there could be head monitor, blood pressure test, uh, sugar, blood sugar tests that are wearables that you can wear on your body and monitor all this for you. When your blood sugar is too, too low or too high, it tells you, it alerts you, or even send information to another device through uh, Bluetooth. Some of the smartwatches can also connect directly to a cellular network. They can utilize GPS location services. They can provide convenient displays for notification from apps and store and play music uh, and then playlists. These are some of the functions of uh, wearables. Now, fitness trackers, 
they are like uh, smart watches, but they are not ordinary watches. They also have the functionality of a watch, but uh, they have a uh, ability uh, to monitor the body, such as physical activity, your sleep, your exercise, and so on. These are fitness uh, trackers. These ones, they are not uh, like uh, uh, ordinary uh, uh, watches that you wear, but they are special devices that are actually small computers that are utilized on the body to monitor health of people. All right. Now, other wearables are the modern uh, game uh, devices, which are augmented and virtual reality devices. In augmented reality, uh, computer graphics are integrated with uh, what is seen in the real world. So uh, when, you, when you use it, it's, uh, what is happening in the real world and the computer graphics are now joined together, and now become one. The graphic overlays can range from cartoon characters in game application to information for emergency management training for first uh, responders. And also in VR, virtual reality, uh, the, the person that wears a special asset, uh, we display graphic uh, from a separate uh, computer. And then it will be as if uh, you are actually inside, the, inside the, the actions that is taking place when you wear it. And then the graphics are immersive, immersive 3D. And then when you put it on, they create a realistic world. Now we begin to behave as if you are in that world that you are seeing. Whereas these graphics are computer graphics that you actually see. Uh, VR use a, a, a users are detector, detected by sensors. Users are detected by sensors, which allow the user to interact with uh, and move around in the virtual environment. So you can begin to move. You see yourself moving, doing things happening in the, in the virtual reality. Even though you are not there, but the computer makes it happen because it can connect sensor through you, which allow you to now act within the uh, the game. So we see example of it on the screen. We see the augmented reality up here. We see virtual reality. The lady is you know having a virtual reality asset and she's behaving as if she's inside that uh, action now. These are also uh, mobile devices. Part of mobile devices that the computer. Uh, Operated devices. All right. Now we want to move on to motherboards, the laptop uh, components. First one is motherboards. The compact nature of uh, laptops ensures that uh, the motherboard is very, very compact. And then the, all the, most of the internal components also, they are small in size so that it can fit into small space. Uh, these uh, size restrictions. Uh, causes a variety of form factors to be developed for a number of uh, laptop components. Some of the components include the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU, and storage devices. So the, the uh, form factors are, are developed to be very small, compact for these uh, devices so that they can fit into small space. Now, some comp uh, components of the laptop, such as the CPU, may be designed to use less power. They are optimized for power usage. Reason being that a laptop is uh, operating on battery, which cannot be last uh, like uh, as mains. So for that reason, the processor and some other components may be designed to use less power than what uh, you is obtainable on the desktop. And then desktop motherboards, uh, they have standard form factors and uh, the standard size and shape of motherboards allow them, uh, uh, allow motherboard uh, manufacturers to fit into a, a common desktop cases. The standard uh, form factor that they use, which is actually ATX. Uh, for, for desktop, we have ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, and ITX. Now, for laptop, we have what we call proprietary uh, form factor, proprietary form factor. Form factor. Uh, the laptop, uh, laptop uh, motherboards, they vary by uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer. So, and then they vary according to their proprietary uh, uh, use. The expansion slot also, we have many PCI in the laptop, whereas on the desktop we have PCI, PCI X, PCI E, and then mini PCI. But for the laptop, it uses only mini PCI. For the RAM slot also, we have sodium. The, 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 the RAM of the laptop is using sodium, sodium uh, form factor. 
for the for the desktop we have dim so dim is for laptop and dim is for the uh, the desktop that is a uh, the difference between the desktop uh, form factor and the laptop uh, form factor the internal components of laptop uh internal components of the laptop are designed to fit into small spaces confined spaces and that is a uh, what we are talking about about the laptop form factor that is different from that of the desktop because with the small space everything has to be compact so ram talking about the ram uh laptop use small outline drawer in line memory module that is a sodium small outline drawer in line memory module sodium whereas in the desktop they use d do in line memory module but this one small outline is uh, added to the to it for laptops then the cpus uh cpu the laptop uh, cpu are designed to use less power and create less heat than that of a uh, normal desktop uh, computers uh normal desktop computers uh, processor is different can generate a lot of heat because it has a uh, uh cooling system that are very pronounced well, you know, desktop uh, uh, is bigger, so the laptop is smaller in size. So uh, the CPU has to generate less heat because uh, we don't have a, the luxury of space to get rid of the heat from the inside of the system. Then SATA drives. Laptop storage devices are typically 1.8 inch or 2.5 inch in width. Then also, uh, most of the devices inside the laptop are solid state uh, devices, solid state uh, uh components such as the in the computer in the desktop computer you have hard disk hard disk drive we don't use hard disk drive uh, in laptop or rather we use a uh, ssd solid state drives uh the solid state drives makes it to you know be capable of higher performance you know, in small size and low power consumption so like you can see on the screen here you see the ram the laptop ram which is sodium you see the processor, the second picture. Uh, the second picture is processor. Then we see the the lax, uh, the desk, uh, the laptop uh, uh, hard drive, which is actually SSD, not hard drive, SSD, solid state drive. And so these are some of the components in the laptop that I use, uh, uh, that are smaller in size and use a different technology to make them more effective and operate in small space because they have confined uh, space area. Next is a special function keys. Uh, the laptop uh, has a, uh, some special function key, uh, function key, FN. If you check your laptop, you see F, F, F1, F2, F3, F4, up to like a F12. Now, these uh, function keys, they are used to activate second function on the dual purpose uh, key. And then uh, when you uh, when you press one functional key with another combination of key on the keyboard, it can help you to navigate to a different, uh, you know, location uh, to actually get a different different functionality of the computer system. Uh, for instance, you can get a uh, different fonts, color, or with an icon. You can bring them out by uh, pressing a functional key with another uh, special key on uh, on on the, on, the, on the keyboard. Uh, some of the examples of functions that we can access through the special function keys include dual displays, volume settings, uh, media options such as fast forward or rewind. Some of those uh, function keys, they, they have that. Uh, another one is a uh, uh, keyboard backlights. You can actually turn on or, or off some of the, uh, the, the lights on the keyboard by using special keys. Screen orientation, screen brightness, Wi-Fi, cellular, and Bluetooth turn on, turn on and off. There are some uh, laptops that have a, uh, the function keys that, that, do, that do that for the laptop. Whereas some have a, another separate button by the side or the front of the laptop where, from where you can actually switch on the Wi-Fi, cellular, or the Bluetooth. Then the other function that you can access through function keys on some laptop include media, op media options, such as play or rewind. Some have touchpad on or off. Some have GPS on or off button. And some have airplay mode, airplay mode on the, the function keys. These are special keys that we use to 
carry out certain uh, functions on the laptop. Okay, so we're now moving on to laptop display components. Display components. We have the LCD, the LED, and the OLED. LCD is liquid crystal display. LED is light emitting diode, and OLED is a organic uh, light emitting diode. These are different types of technology of display of the laptop screen. Uh, the LCD is commonly used uh, twisted pneumatic or in plain switching. Twisted, twisted pneumatic or in plain switching, IPS. That is uh, what you usually um, uh, have on LCD technology. For light emitting diode LED, uses less power and has a longer lifespan than LCD. So take note of that. That's advantage of LED. Uses less power and has longer lifespan than the LCD screen. Apart from that, the last one is organic light emitting diode OLED. It's used commonly for mobile devices and digital cameras. So these are different uh, technologies of display of uh, mobile devices such as laptop and uh, smartphones. So we could see them here. We see different uh, display, and we see the the different parts of this uh, display. Uh, display the graphics here on the page. Okay, apart from that, uh, the laptop, the display features, there are some common uh, display feature of the laptop that we use to characterize the display. One is the touchable screen. Some laptops permit uh, the touch screen to be used like a tablet. And when the display is, uh, uh, when the display is detached, and actually detach the screen, and then the laptop will now become, you know, a tablet. That's a function of a, some modern uh, laptop, their screen, they are detachable. And then another one is the, the touch screens. Uh, many laptops now, uh, they now come with a touch screens by which uh, rather than typing on your keyboard, you type directly on the screen like a, a smartphone touch screen. Then others have a cutoff switches. A cutoff switch helps to conserve power by turning off the display. So by by the setting that uh, they, they have actually set it, then turn off the display so that uh, the screen can uh, you know, conserve uh, energy use, conserve the power in the battery. So see different types of uh, special display, the touchable screen here, the touch screen here, and then the cutoff. The cutoff is just a uh, switch off the screen so that uh, the, power, the power from the battery can be reduced, power uh, consumed from the battery can be reduced. We have backlights and inverters. Backlights and inverters are utilized in a modern uh, laptop screen also. Two common types of backlights are the cold cathode fluorescent lamp, CCFL, and the light emitting diode uh, lights. Apart from that, we also have a uh, display components which are, which are backlights and inverters. Fluorescent backlights, inverter, and LED backlights. These are, the backlights are utilized uh, with, this, on, uh, with the screen from the back of the screen to actually uh, you know, lighten up uh, the screen. We have the component, the modules that function for that. On the screen, you can see some of the, this, uh, the features of those uh, modules uh, that perform that. Okay. Uh, next one, we are going to Wi-Fi and antenna connectors. The Wi-Fi components in the in the uh, laptop display include the Wi-Fi antennas, uh, which are actually located uh, usually located above the screen, on top of the screen. That is where uh, the uh, Wi-Fi antenna and connectors are are, are hidden. It's on top. And then Wi-Fi antenna leads. The Wi-Fi antenna is connected to a wireless card by an antenna wire, and the antenna leads. Then Wi-Fi antenna guides, the wires are fastened to the display units by wire guides located on the sides of the screen. So all these, uh, they are not, uh, you know, they, can, they are not viewable from the outside the system on, until you, you know, disassemble the parts of the system, the laptop, to actually see uh, the different components that we have mentioned here. Wi-Fi connectors, Wi-Fi antenna leads, and Wi-Fi antenna wire guides. We have the a physical appearance of those components here. If you if you check check the first part here, it's a screen of the laptop that has been disassembled, 
And on top, we see where the all the components are hidden. The antenna that is uh, responsible for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular. And then we see what is there. What is there is the second picture here, a board. That is uh, what is responsible for wireless connectivity. Okay. And so that is how it is. And then on the side, the side of the computer, we have Wi-Fi antenna and wire guides. The wire guides guide the wire to be connected at the top to the antenna from the computer, from the, the, the entire system unit, the laptop system unit. Then laptop display components also include a webcam, webcam and microphone. Webcam and microphone are small, small portion of the laptop that are used for uh, uh, video conferencing, recording, and so on and so forth. Almost all laptops today have a webcam and microphone built in. So we can, like I'm having this uh, lecture now, the in, in a, in a uh, microphone of the laptop is being utilized. The webcam is also being utilized. So I actually have uh, this uh, uh, video conferencing lecture. So the webcam is normally positioned at the top center of the display. When you open the, the screen, you see it at the top center. And then the microphone, the internal microphone can be found next to the webcam also on top there. And some manufacturers place uh, the microphone next to the keyboard or on the side of the laptop. I remember one of uh, uh, my former uh, laptop, the microphone was placed in the front, the front of the of the system unit of the, of the laptop. So it's not uh, on the top, but uh, manufacturer using, uh, different manufacturers use uh, there are different uh, settings, different uh, you know uh, configuration of their manufacture. All right. Now let's talk about a uh, configuring laptop power management. Uh, configuring power setting of the laptop will help a user to better manage the battery that is supplying the power, so that the battery can be utilized more efficiently. The battery, uh, the, the charged up battery, can be utilized more efficiently. Power management controls the flow of electricity to different parts of the computer so that the uh, up, uh, different parts of the computer will not uh, you know, unnecessarily use power and drain the battery unnecessarily. Uh, the advantage of this uh, advanced configuration and power interface is that it creates a bridge between hardware and operating system and allows uh, technicians to create power management schemes so that they can get the best performance from the laptop. So these are some of the settings that you can utilize on the ACPI, the Advanced Config Configuration and Power Interface of the laptop. We have S0. S0 is a computer is on and the CPU is running. When you have S0 states, it means the computer is on and the CPU is running. S1, the CPU and the RAM are still receiving power, but on use devices are powered down. S2, the CPU is off, but the RAM is refreshed. The system is in lower mode than S1. S3, the CPU is off and the RAM is set to slow refresh rate, and this mode is often called safe to RAM, and it's known as a suspend mode. S4, the CPU and RAM are off, and the contents of RAM have been saved to a temporary file on the hard disk, and this mode is called, uh, this mode is called safe to disk, and that is the state known as hibernate mode. When you hibernate the system, the computer is turned off, CPU, RAM, they are turned off, but what was on RAM was saved onto a temporary file uh, on the hard disk. Mean that when you turn the computer on, that temporary file will be loaded up. Rather than booting the system up from the operating system directly, what was the last uh, uh, information, last activity of the system that was saved will be loaded and then it will be displayed. And that is hibernation mode. S5. On S5, the computer is completely off. The system is, you know, shut down completely. Then, how to manage the ACPI settings? Uh, we can do this in BIOS. Uh, it is required by technicians to frequently uh, configure these power settings by changing the settings in the BIOS or UEFI setup. So when they, uh, they navigate to the BIOS, they go to power management, and then ACPI uh, can be you know can be configured. When you configure the power. The power settings uh, it can have, have effects on the following parts, system states, battery and AC modes, thermal management, CPU, PCI bus power management, and wake on LAN uh, function, WOL. 
the ACPI power management mode should be enabled in the BIOS or EFI to allow the operating system to configure the power management states. So that's a, if you allow the ACPI power management mode in the BIOS or UEFI, then operating system can configure power management states. You can be able to actually change configuration settings for the power management. Uh, next one is wireless configuration, that is Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth is the specif uh, special uh, specific technical specification by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, IEEE. That is a IEEE 802.15 standard. That is Bluetooth uh, technology. And Bluetooth devices are capable of uh, handling voice, music, video, and data. Nowadays, you have uh, Bluetooth devices that you connect to your, possibly your smartphone, a small device that can be a radio or uh, video player or audio player that you connect through Bluetooth to your device and then you play from your device and then you bring the, you know, whatever you play out, the device, the Bluetooth device, you bring it out because they have this functionality to connect voice, music, video, and data. Now, the distance that a Bluetooth can actually cover is a personal area network and this is limited to about uh, 33 feet, uh, 33 feet, a range of 33 feet or 10 meter in the power uh, personal area network. When you set up Bluetooth, you are, you are setting up a personal area network and most distance that you can cover is about 10 meters. So after 10 meters, the Bluetooth signal will be faded and you will not be able to, will not be able to connect. Then the uh, security measures have been put into Bluetooth use. Okay. When you are connecting your device to another device, the first time you are connecting, the device will ask for authentication, which will include uh, enter, uh, entering a pin you know, using PIN to access or connect the other device. And that is termed as peering, peering. So Bluetooth supports uh, about 128-bit encryption and PIN authentication. 128-bit encryption is a high security encryption in a computer language. And then PIN authentication. PIN authentication ensures that uh, the, the same PIN will be entered from both devices before they can be connected. Wireless uh, configuration. Now, Bluetooth uh, laptop connection. Windows <clears throat> activates uh, connections to Bluetooth devices by default. That is, uh, if the, there is Bluetooth uh, uh, functionality on the laptop. Now, if the connection is not active, then you must look for a switch on your system, whether in the front, on the keyboard, somewhere, a function key, where you can turn on the uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, connection to make it active. But uh, if your system does not have a Bluetooth technology, then a Bluetooth, a small Bluetooth uh, hardware, a small module can be, you know, purchased and installed through USB. And then you store a small driver into the system and then the system will now begin to use Bluetooth also. Now, before you install and configure a device, you must make sure of uh, three things. Make sure that the Bluetooth is enabled in the BIOS, that's number one. If the Bluetooth is not enabled, then the hardware you are connecting may not be able to you know, function. Number two, turn on the device and make it discoverable. The device you want to link to your to your to your system through Bluetooth must be turned on. The Bluetooth over there must be turned on, and you must turn on the uh, uh, the function for it to be visible on that device so that it can be seen by your own system. Then you can also use Bluetooth Wizard to search and discover Bluetooth devices that are discoverable around the location. So you can see one, someone here trying to connect uh, the laptop to the smartphone via Bluetooth. So some of these things will be utilized to ensure that the system can communicate with the uh, mobile phone via Bluetooth. All right. Now, cellular, cellular one. We talk of a cellular one. Uh, that is a wide area network. The, the laptop also has a, the functionality of the cellular one uh, because they are integrated with uh, capacities which require no software installation and no additional antenna or accessories. It is inbuilt. It's already inbuilt to the system. They can connect to the uh, wireless network. Uh, some uh, laptops use a special function key to turn on uh, you know, this function. While some, it's just by default. Once you turn on the system, the function is also turned on. Those are uses, uh, those are use switch. 
you have to turn on the switch to ensure that the signal is turned on for wireless, for Wi-Fi, for cellular, and so on and so forth. And then uh, most of our cellular uh, phones, they provide the ability to connect with other devices uh, to the internet, ability to connect other devices to the internet. And that is Tetrum. If you want to connect your laptop to the internet, you can use your uh, mobile phone as hotspots, whether through con con connected uh, through Wi-Fi or either through Bluetooth or by using a USB cable. So by that, your laptop can reach the internet via your mobile phone. That is why what is termed the Tetrin. So you can see on the screen here, we see the Tetrin, the personal hotspot that has been turned on by the green button here, it is on. If it is turned off, turn off, the green button becomes white or gray. And so it will not be able to you know, send out the uh, wireless signal through the uh, Tetrin. Okay. Uh, when the, a cellular phone allows the Wi-Fi devices to connect and use the mobile data network, then that's a function is termed as hotspots, hotspots. And you can access cellular network by using a cellular hotspots device. That's what we have just explained. You can link the internet via the cellular network provided by the hotspot of a mobile phone. Wi-Fi. Laptops, laptops usually, usually have access to the internet by using wireless adapters. Wireless adapters are already built into the laptop and they can be built in or attached through a USB or expansion ports. Uh, you can buy a module, a dongle from a network provider and connect it through USB and then the laptop begins to beam uh, to the internet, connect to the internet. If you are using an expansion card, we have many PCI cards that are capable of a Operating 802.11a, 802.11b, 802.11g uh, wireless uh, connections. Then the mini PCIe and PCI Express Micro, they support all those standards and they also support in addition 802.11n and 802.11ac. These are the, the modules that we are talking about that are responsible for Wi Fi connection to the system. This is mini PCI. Is to be embedded uh, into the system by connecting it to the expansion slot. This is mini PCIe, and this is PCI Express Micro. They are Wi-Fi uh, connection modules that make the laptop to be able to connect wirelessly to external network. All right. Now, laptop hardware and component installation and configuration. Some of the express cars that we want to talk about are uh, the cars that are installed to expansion slots. We have Express Bus, Express Card 54. The size is 75 millimeter by 50, 54 millimeter, and it's a uh, five millimeter thick. We also have interface, uh, PC, uh, interface card, which is PCI Express, USB 2.0 or USB 3.0. We have uh, other examples. The examples are here, the smart card reader, the compact flash reader and 1.8 inch disk drive. These are some of the express cars. They are, they are connected through express bus, size 75 by 34 mm. Thickness is five millimeter. Interface, PCI Express, can be connected through PCI Express USB 2.0 or USB 3.0. The example that connects with this uh, express bus is a uh, Firewire, TV tuner card, and wireless uh, network interface card. Those are the, uh, the modules that can connect through that. The previous one we've got, uh, we discussed is a uh, Express Bus, which is Express Card 54. Uh, the modules that can connect to that is Smart Card Reader, Compact Flash Reader, 1.8 inch disk drive. And these are examples of some of these uh, 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 expansion slots that are uh, for connecting Express uh, Express cards, a FireWire TV tuner, wireless NIC. Some laptops have these functionalities, others don't have. Other laptops, for instance, have this other functionality, the Express Bus here. And newer laptops usually have a, some of them usually have this, where others don't have anyone at all. Uh, those that don't have rely on USB to connect external, some of these external adapters. Flash memory. Now talking about expansion slots, uh, the the external uh, memory to the system uh, also 
uh, part of the expansion uh, that we can use to expand the functionality of the computer. External flash drive is a removable storage device that connects to an expansion port such as USB, eSATA, or FireWire. And the flash drives, uh, they provide access to fast data, high reliability, and they reduce power usage. You can see flash drive up here. They are connected through USB to the system. Then we also have flash card. Flash card can be used to connect SD card or uh, a digital camera uh, memory card. You can use flash cards to connect them. So the laptop also have a, a port for the flash card. Uh, flash card is a data storage device that uses flash memory to store the information. And they are small, portable, and require no power to maintain at all. Just inserted them into the ports provided by the laptop. And when you want to eject them, there's a button you just press. So you press the card a second time, then it, it is ejected. Then flashcard readers. Uh, most modern uh, laptops have that port. That is a flashcard reader by the side. You can use it to, to connect SD card, secure digital card, or secure digital high capacity flashcards. Secure digital high capacity. That's SDHC uh, flash card. You could see the laptop here. You could see the side of the laptop displaying the flash card uh, uh, reader. It's wider than the ordinary uh, ports such as the USB or HDMI. That is where you insert uh, some of these uh, flash cards here. Then we have the USB port next, where you buy, you install, you install your uh, USB flash drive to the system. The smart card reader also, uh, other devices that are smart card reader also, they are devices such as the electronic payment system, POS, telephone calling system, payment, and other application. So on the smart card, there's a microprocessor that uh, uh, hold information and a magnetic, uh, uh, like that of a magnetic, uh, uh, more than that of a magnetic stripe. There is a module, a chip in the card that is uh, being connected through the uh, smart card reader, like the POS. The smart card reader, they read and write uh, into the smart cards. The copying information, sometimes they also uh, send information there. And there are two types of card readers. One is contacts, the one that you have to insert into a particular reader. Insert the card into the reader. And the second one is contactless. The contactless, you just place the reader near to the card and it reads out the information on the card and uh, executes uh, the functions. So that one is working on a radio frequency that communicates when the card comes close to the card reader. We have a, a expansion slot again. Now I want to talk about the sodium memory, small outline, do I inline a memory uh, module. Sodium, which is a memory module utilized in the laptop. The the memory module on the computer, on the desktop computer, is DIMM, do I inline with memory uh, module? DIMM. But for the laptop, it is sodium, like we mentioned earlier. And then it can be classified. The sodium memory can be classified by the DDR version, you know, double data rate uh, memory. You can use it to also classify them more. And different laptops model require different types of sodiums. The, the sodium for laptop is not the same uh, size or the same uh, capacity, the same physical size or the same uh, capacity. No. Uh, most laptops, RAM is inserted into slots behind the cover on the underside of the case. When you open the underside of the case, you see a slot where you can actually you know, store your RAM. All right. And then the currently installed RAM, or, uh, the amount of uh, RAM installed on the system can be viewed as your system is booting up during POST screen. You can actually go to BIOS or go to system properties in Windows to actually uh, access the volume of RAM that is installed in the system. Laptop uh, uh, parts replacements, replacing laptop components. Overview of hardware replacements. Uh, some parts of the laptop may be needed to be replaced. Typically, 
uh, some are called a customer replaceable unit, CRUs. They can be replaced directly by the user, by the owner of the laptop. But uh, there are other parts that are called field replaceable units that the user cannot by himself replace them. And this part should not be replaced by the customer by himself because they are field replaceable units. Uh, the customer replaceable units include uh, parts such as battery and the RAM that you can open somewhere yourself, remove it, and you know, bring another one and it starts. That's a common parts like a laptop and the RAM, laptop battery and the RAM. They are, they are customer replaceable unit. But few replaceable units, they include parts like a motherboard, LCD display, keyboard, and so on. Now, a repair center actually helps customers when they cannot actually uh, do some uh, repair or maintenance themselves. And some of the maintenance that uh, a repair center can actually do for a customer include hardware and software diagnostics, data transfer and recovery, keyboard and fan replacement, internal laptop cleaning, screen repair, LCD inverter and backlight repair. These are some of the uh, repair and maintenance that cannot be carried out directly by the customer himself, but has to be taken to a computer center where a technician the peer technician will undo all those parts. Okay. Replacing uh, uh, the laptop uh, battery. You know, the battery of the laptop is uh, what stores the power to be used when not at home or in the office. Now, when is it necessary to replace the laptop battery? Uh, when these three conditions, uh, you know, either of these three conditions, or two are present. For instance, the battery does not hold the charge. You charge the laptop for two hours, three hours, and then when you remove the charge, the, the, the power, you begin to use the laptop and it doesn't last. Maybe after five minutes, that's gone off. Or immediately you remove the external power, it goes off. The system goes off. It means the battery needs to be replaced. Or the battery is overheating. When you begin to use the battery now, the system begin, be, be, become very hot. When the system becomes very hot, it means the battery is overheating and then the battery may need to be replaced. Or perhaps the battery is leaking. You now perceive or you, you touch the, the battery and you see some uh, wet parts coming out from the battery. It means the battery needs replacement. Whenever you ex experience such a, such things like this, such a problem that we have highlighted here, the battery should be you know replaced. And a good battery that is compatible with the system should be used to replace it. Uh, the battery you are bringing in must meet the same you know, you know, specification like the old one or even higher to meet the specification of the laptop specified by the manufacturer or even higher than that. Otherwise, it will, it will not serve well. A new batteries must use the same form factor as the original battery. Hence, you cannot install the battery into the, uh, into the, into the uh, battery uh, parts of the laptop. It must come with the same form factor. And then the voltage, the power rating, and AC adapter must also meet a manufacturer's specifications. These are some of the things you must consider before you replace a, a laptop a battery. All right. So on your own, to your own convenience, you can research battery, uh, battery replacement, laptop battery replacement online. Now let's talk, let's look at the internal storage of optical drive. The form factor of an internal storage device is smaller for laptop than that of a desktop computer. The laptop drives are 1.8 inch, 2.5 inch in width, which is a 4.5 centimeter or 6.35 centimeter. That is a, the drive of the laptop, the DVD drive or CD drive. And then most storage devices are, are customer replaceable units unless uh, there's a statement, a, wa a warranty statement that says otherwise. So you can actually replace your, your DVD drive yourself. If you know how to bring it out, there's a way you can bring it out and remove it and then bring another one and it starts. Also, uh, on most laptops, internal hard drive and the internal optical drive are inserted into base that are protected by a cover on the case. All right. 
And then uh, hard drive two can be a customer replaceable unit. Uh, at the back of the, usually at the back of the laptop, then you'll be able to open some compartments and remove the, the drive, the hard drive. But on some laptops, you must remove the keyboard before you'll be able to access a, a storage drive, such as a hard drive on some laptops. Now to view the currently installed storage devices, you can check the POST screen, or that is a, when the system is booting, go to Windows, uh, go to BIOS rather, you direct the system to go to BIOS, do a POST, and then be able to see the volume of the storage drive installed. Or when the system has a finished booting, you can go to uh, computer properties and check the volume uh, that is installed. Here we have the picture of a, DVD drive that has been removed from the laptop, the user can actually do that. Yeah, it's, it requires a little uh, knowledge. It's a customer replaceable unit. Okay, so we have gone so far. And then uh, today, we want to, we, we want to uh, look at uh, other mobile devices hardware briefly before we go other mobile devices uh, hardware. So once we look at, we have looked at uh, uh, laptop devices, laptop uh, hardware, parts of the uh, laptop, and how to, we can take care of them, how we can replace them and so forth. Now, let's look at other mobile devices uh, uh, parts. For instance, we have the cell phone parts. Our cell phone has uh, various parts that we can actually uh, look into today. Uh, it contains some of these fields, some of these parts, memory, a SIM card, and a battery. A SIM, S-I-M, that is a subscriber information module. It's a card that contains information used to authenticate the device to mobile telephone and data, provider, data providers. Uh, the card also can hold the user data such as personal contacts and text messages. Then the system, uh, the mobile device can also have a digital card, a secure digital card, that is used to add more memory to uh, the mobile device to expand the storage. And also, sometimes a, a mobile device uh, malfunctions, and then if it's malfunction, sometimes you have to send it to manufacturer or uh, the repair center where they can actually repair or replace uh, some parts on the mobile device. These are some of the uh, parts of the mobile device of our cell phones. Then uh, connectivity, mobile device uh, hardware connectivity, you can connect uh, uh, your mobile devices using mini USB cable, which is used to connect a mobile device to electrical outlet to charge, or to another device, maybe USB, in order to charge uh, or transfer data. If you use USB cable for your mobile device, you can link it to a system that has, that has power and use it to charge your device or to transfer data. Then we also have micro USB cable, which is used to connect mobile devices to electrical outlets and other device in order to also charge or transfer data. Then lightning cable, lightning cable is used to connect Apple devices to host computers and other peripherals such as USB, battery chargers, monitors, and cameras. So that is for the uh, Apple devices. They use a lightning cable. Uh, for the other, Devices, they use a mini USB, USB-C, and a micro USB. A USB-C can be uh, plugged in either direction and used to your mobile devices to connect to an electrical outlet charger or to another device in order to charge it. All right. Then uh, wireless connectivities and shared internet connections. Apart from uh, Wi-Fi, mobile devices also use uh, these uh, connectivities near feed communication. It enables devices to establish a radio communication with other devices by placing devices close together. By the time you place them close together or touching them together, then uh, near feed communication can send a signal between the two. They can send data information between the two devices. Then also infrared. Infrared is a mobile device. Uh, if a device, uh, mobile device is infrared enabled, then it can be used to control other infrared control devices remotely such as TV, uh, set-top box, or audio equipment. Probably you have seen somebody using his mobile phone to actually serve as a remote controller for his television. He's using infrared connection. 
So the the mobile mobile phone can actually serve as a remote controller for a television. Then Bluetooth. Bluetooth uh, allows data exchange over short distances between two Bluetooth enabled devices. We have discussed that today. And then they, uh, they can go to uh, connect uh, in a limited uh, at a limited distance. And you can use them to connect not only mobile devices, you can use them to connect a Bluetooth enabled devices such as speakers, uh, music player, and so on and so forth. Then uh, the internet connection of a smartphone can be shared with other devices. We have mentioned that it can be used through data or mobile or sports. And use mobile or sports or data to connect. Then wearable devices. Wearable devices are connected or attached to the clothes or to the body like a miniature computing device. Example are smartwatches, fitness monitors, smart headsets, and uh, some other uh, small, small devices as such. The virtual reality headset and the augmented reality, they are also part of the mobile wearable devices. The VR headset provide the wearer complete immersion, you know, complete immersion experience as if you are into what is happening in that device. So you, you act, you operate, you know, like you are part of uh, the scene. <coughs> Augmented reality assets also overlay digital elements in a, to a live view of the physical world using the camera of a smartphone. So these are mobile devices things. We have other speciality devices such as a global positioning system that is using navigation, to, you know, satellite navigation to actually uh, direct uh, uh, people. The, sat the GPS satellites are actually located in space, far away, and they transmit signal to the Earth. And then these devices can communicate with them to locate a particular uh, position or location on the Earth to determine the location of, of, a, uh, of a particular uh, you know, device. Then we have electronic reader, which is called e-reader. It's a device that is optimized for reading texts, such as reading electronic books, e-books, newspapers, and other documents. They have Wi-Fi or cellular connectivity for downloading content. So these are other mobile devices uh, available as a part of computer system. So that's where we are going to stop for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoy the lecture. I expect you people to uh, you know, type your question. If you have any question, type your question to the chat box so that I can respond. So with that, we are coming to the end of the lecture for today. So thank you very much for linking up for joining the class. So until another time when the class uh, we also resume. Thank you very much. I say bye-bye.